As you all know, Mrs. W and I have started down the road of simplification. My arbitrary goal that I kind of have in my head is ultimately what I'd like to do is to get rid of 75% of the junk that I have around here. And I've done a pretty good job with that in the house. I, uh, I, we, we started with clothing and shoes and, and have been giving away things and really paring down and it's, it's netted uh, really great results. I've been a lot more organized and I've had a lot more peace. It, you know, I guess for the, the bedroom was kind of where, the master bedroom is where we started to have a bedroom that's sorted out and things are folded in. You've went through everything and if you're not using it, you're getting rid of it. Uh, brings a lot of peace and it's nice to at least to have one little bit of uh, order and organization uh, in a life of chaos. I'd like to extend that out to the shop. Uh, I guess the, the, the catalyst for this whole thing is I was doing a project the other day and I needed some cribbing. And I have always kept cribbing. My granddad always did. Cribbing, if you don't know, is an assortment of different blocks and sizes of things. When you need to drive up on ramps, so you need to block things up for safety. It's just a good, common thing to have. And when I went to my cribbing pile, it was, it was really frustrating to me. I didn't have what I needed. I had pieces that were too short, too long, different thicknesses. There wasn't any... Um, there wasn't any order to it, and I ended up, as I do many times, being becoming very frustrated and having to start over and make new cribbing. And then because I'm not organized, usually I'll take that cribbing and I'll use it for a project or something, and, and so it's this vicious circle. So I thought, let's go through systematically in the shop and do kind of a common man's, um, uh, well, well, we could do cribbing. Common man's is a set of things that we're go guys gonna need. And when I look over there, I'm looking at the cribbing, we'll, we'll go over here in a minute, but when I'm looking at that, I see a mishmas, I see a mess of or disorganization, and basically something that takes up a lot of space that's not providing a lot of use. And in addition to cribbing, I think what goes along well with that, and maybe the next episode or the next installment on that is, is pulleys and jacks and such. I have a dozen jacks around here and probably two thirds of them or three quarters of them um, don't work. And I always have in my mind, well, you know, that's a good jack, that's a, a snap-on jack or that's a USA made jack and someday, someday, someday I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna learn how to take that apart and get those O-rings out and, and make that work. But you know what the reality is? Is that someday's never gonna happen. It's, it's, it's just not gonna happen. When I look back to I guess when I ask myself what I want in life, what I want in life is I, is I want um, peace, a peaceful life, and I want contentment. And when I walk into my shop and I spend so much time in here, I ask myself this morning, do you feel peaceful and do you feel content with what you've built, what is around you? And the answer is no. I don't feel peace and I don't feel contentment. And then I ask myself, so why is that? Well, why that is, is I can't come in here and enjoy myself and work on a project that I want to do because everywhere around me, I'm surrounded with unfinished projects and things that I've put off and things that I really know deep down, if I'm gonna be honest with myself, that I'm never ever going to get to. So I think it might be kind of a fun series of videos that we can take these things and break them into categories. Today, we're gonna to do cribbing and do it and do it right and do it permanently in a way that this is an organized, an organized system. This is a system that is going to be useful for the rest of our life that we don't have to worry about anymore. That we could always add to it if we needed to, but it'll be a good foundation for the common man. So today we're gonna to go, we're gonna get started on the common man's cribbing kit. This is the shelf where I've always kept my cribbing. And I, I come to this all the time and grab things. And a couple problems that I have is um, lack of uniformity and lack of length. So when you're, when you're cribbing, you usually need two things of equal size. It just seems that way to me. And to have things at varying thicknesses, you know, because I have the sawmill, I've got things that are cut on full dimension lumber. I've got things that are store-bought that are not full dimensional. And there's, there, it's tippy. It's always been... It's always been a problem and a mess. It's just this hodgepodge of junk and splintered wood. And the other things, nothing's got handles on it. So when you want to grab two four by six by sixes or four by sixes, you have to come back and you can't take two at one time. So let's get rid of all of this. See if there's anything we can repurpose. Let's make some really nice cribbing with rope handles that is going to be something that we can enjoy and it's going to make life a lot easier. You're going to need four different sizes of material. You're going to need 2x4, 2x6, 4x4, and 4x6. So just pick up scraps you have at home, 
Look for something that's in good shape, that's really sound. I'm gonna be using red fir. If you have hardwoods, that's of course the best. Oak, you can, oak would be the, the gold standard of this, but I just don't have access to that. We'll look at that for our wedges. Uh, but this is where we'll start. So some of this is full dimension, like the two by fours. The rest of them is pr the rest of it's pretty standard. So let's cut our billets out, and then we'll uh, go about uh, personalizing them and making them super nice. So what we're gonna do here is we're a couple things. So on the two by fours, I'm gonna cut a little 60 degree bevel on there. You can turn that on the side and hit that with your chop saw, but I'm gonna leave uh, one inch on there because if you cut them down to a point, they get kind of fragile and they end up chipping and breaking off. On the back side, we're gonna do just to make it kind of make it your own and pleasing to the eye. Uh, we'll just wrap, do a six inch wrap with the black. Um, and then we'll do a single fisherman knot on just an old hank of rope here. Now the rope is going to be exactly two feet long, so measure it. Here, we'll do it together here in just a minute, but measure it the length of your block. That way when you tie your, fish, your single fisherman, then uh, they're all exactly the same and you've got that kind of that uh, evenness. So when these are stacked up in your shop, or wherever you're gonna put them in your vehicle, those hang down there and that length is really nice. It's just enough you can get your hand in there and you can grab four of these at a time or sometimes even six of these at a time just quickly with two hands. See, by drilling from both sides, we get a, a pretty clean hole that's centered where we want it. So it just looks nice and it's, it takes a little bit of extra time, but it's worth doing. Now don't paint with cold paint. We're gonna just be using some flat black enamel, a uh, rattle can. Uh, put it in front of a heater, take it inside by the wood stove, make sure it's warm when you're about to use it. You don't want to paint with the cold paint. If your rattle cans have been sitting for a while, how long do you shake them? 60 seconds. 60 seconds is typically what you want uh, from something that's been sitting. And we're not making pianos here, we're just going to do a quick coat of, of black. Maybe you use red, re almost use red. Red looks nice too, but the black it's, uh, looks better when you're using something that's going to get all greasy. For your rope, I'd recommend something that's like a half inch in diameter, something kind of big and that's got some structure to it so it kind of holds itself out because you want that to hold it out where you can get a hold of it like that knot there. I'd probably stay away from anything like paracord that's too small. Uh, one cheap way to, to go about it would probably be uh, at Home Depot, they've got that colored we, we, woven rope. You know, it's kind of supposed to make you think it's this nice cotton stuff. This is some old stuff I had from my granddad's things. Here's that cheap stuff. You know, you always see it on sale in like a 50 foot hank. It'll work fine for this. <laughs> Melt those ends and then it's not gonna fray on you and come apart. Now this is the absolute minimum. A bit of rope you can get away with, but I'm trying to maximize uh, rope and, and not to be wasteful. So that 24 inches, you can get a single fisherman through that. Uh, the four the four by material. Now, if we're gonna, when we're doing our six bys, we're gonna have to be a little bit bigger. The knot that I've been using to connect these is just I think it's a single fisherman. So match these ends here. It's uh, don't go with a double fisherman. It's gonna it's gonna be too um, it's gonna take up too much. You won't have enough rope for it. But just make a loop around both of them and then back through the loop that you made. Uh, keep the rope keep it dressed and don't let it get the tail get too big or you won't have enough rope and then pull that tight and same, same thing here. You can go around both and then back through itself. Um, I think that's a single fisherman. It might be, might not be, but once you get those there, then you can pull these tight. Make sure you dress them so that the tails are the same. And then if you pull these really tight, they'll come together. And that's a nice little knot right there for splicing uh, two lines together. And there you have a really good loop that you can hold on to. You remember the before pile, I took it out and piled it up there. Now the after. This is a great way to do this. I can essentially, if I want to, I can grab this whole set of cribbing. Well, most of it, I think I could. Yep, I can grab all eight pieces easily with one hand and take them out and do whatever I'm doing. What, working on your car, jacking up a trailer. It, it's just quick and simple and it just looks, it looks so nice. It's something you can be, you can be proud of uh, when you look at it. And that's the point of this whole series. You know what I'm talking about. This is a perfect example. Now, when I came into the shop, I mean, this happened, 
This has happened hundreds of times. I, I've, I've thought about this a lot. You know, as I come in here, I look around and I think to myself, you know, what, what I need to do, and this is another one of those unfinished projects, just one of those things that just kind of weighs on your mind, or you just, I, for me, if I don't do quality work, I, I, I feel ashamed of myself. I, I don't expect to be a master carpenter or be able to be the best guy at anything, but I want to be able to at least look yourself in the mirror and say, well, I did, I did the best I could with the tools that I had, with the, with the skill level that I had, and, and you can put that to rest and you can be at peace with it. When I would come in and I'd see this, you know, when I come in and see this now, um, that's never again going to happen. I don't have to think about that. It's one less worry, one less thing that I guess points to your, um, uh, of, of your lack of uh, seeing things through or your lack of uh, organization or just caring um, that you'll never, ever have to worry about again. I know it's a small thing, but it's a victory. It's, 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 you know, to use the old cl cliche, a journey starts with the first step. If you don't take that first step, you're never, you're never going to get to your destination. Same thing here. So it's a small thing. It's the cribbing, but you know, maybe next time it's the, we get all of our jacks and we go through those and we give away the stuff that we're not using. There's so many young guys uh, that are just getting started that would, that would be really grateful to have a lot of those cast off tools um, that us hoarders ha have collected. And I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get to that. I've given stuff to Brian or taking it to the kids at the church and stuff. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. And you know, to be able to, to come to this area, when you, if you had something that needed jacked up or cribbed or, or whatever, and you've got, you've got your jacks, you've got your wedges, you've got your ramps and everything in one needy, tidy spot, um, makes the job a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. And also, what does that speak to you as a person, um, as a man? I'm mean, starting at home when you, if your wife is to come out, let's, let's, a perfect example is if we talk about leadership. We're going to go into a little manly manners here, but I think it's, I think it's appropriate. You, if you have a, a child or, or if you have a, a wife uh, that, or, or even if you're a wife, you have a husband that um, is, is just lacking in some way. He's got something that really bothers you. Maybe he doesn't pick up his clothes. Uh, maybe she doesn't take care of her car or, or something like that. And you've harped and harped and harped on it, and it just doesn't seem to change, and it starts, it starts to become a wedge in that relationship. Well, the best way to deal with a situation like that is to, you know, as, as uh, Christ said to Peter, you know, what is that to you? You worry about your own things. I'm paraphrasing here. You know, thou followest me. What he's saying is that uh, you worry about your own relationship and your own things. So why don't you go clean your car and have it spotless all the time? I mean, really make an extra effort. Don't nag your wife about her car. Um, you know, go and, and clean it and, uh, and keep yours a certain way. And you don't have to say anything at all because that standard of excellence is contagious and it brings a reproach and shame upon the person without you ever having to say a word. And hopefully, reproach and shame is a good thing for all of us if it causes us to change a lifestyle or change something in our life or a, or a character trait or personality trait that is, that is bad. That is something that we, don't, that's not a, that we don't want to continue down the road with. And same thing with your shop. You know, you... you Keep it, keep it tidy, and, and you know, maybe, maybe your wife, if she doesn't keep a house clean or doesn't keep it the way you think it should be, um, that uh, she will see that and be inspired by that, and you don't ever have to say a word. That's the best type of leadership. Good leadership is not yelling and screaming and commanding people to do things under, the, under a tyrannical rule or under the fear of punishment or ostracizement. It's leading by example. It's going forward and doing, not asking someone to do something that you're not unwilling to do yourself. So there is a lot to this. This, is, this video for me is not just about cribbing. I mean, that's, that's not a very interesting thing. I mean, which one of you out there could do this or better? It's, it's about a thought process and it's about uh, taking that step and, and, and changing things, you know? You take a project like this, there's so much to it. You, you, just, just, you can discount it as being inconsequential but if you have a, a young son or a young daughter and you want to spend time together and you want to do things, what better project could you go out and do? Because it's not outside the scope of, of anyone here watching these videos. And look at the things that you can pass on. You can pass on how to cut, mark and cut a board straight. 
you get, you get to pass on a little bit of education about um, spray paint and painting, um, masking and, and working with paper and, and detail stuff. You get to show them uh, how to use power tools. Which one of you guys doesn't have a cordless tool? If you don't have, or, or a corded tool, I'm talking about a drill. Uh, you should should have something like that and a basic bit. You know, use what you have. You got you get the tool element, and then you also have the lesson of stewardship and and the pride of doing something well. You know, the difference is with this right here. Just thinking, if you were if you were to build these right, and you you pass along, and and your loved ones are going through your. Um, going through your, your possessions and, and divvying them up, you know, as right, rightfully so. If they came across this, would that mean anything to anyone? Would it ever be in another one of your family members or sons or grandsons or daughters or granddaughters, their lives again or in their shop? Would they be making videos on YouTube talking about being ha the joy of, of, like I do, of being able to put my hands on tools that belong to my grandfather and, 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 and have that that memory every time that that I grab one and reminding me of where who I am and where I came from or some because this is not going to do that this is going to be a burden for them it's going to be something that they're going to have to deal with and get rid of and and this here on the other hand I mean which one of you if you came across your granddad's stuff and he had this nice set of cribbing set up like this I, I almost guarantee you you wouldn't throw that out you would know that he put time and effort into it it would be a lesson to you of doing things the best of your ability. Maybe every time you looked at these and that these were in the shop, it would inspire you to do a little bit better in the work that you do yourself. You know, I don't, it, where's the limit to this? I just don't really know. So this is not a video about cribbing. This is a video about becoming a better man.